Dr. Bowen back here with you for another session of Microbiology Boot Camp. Our topic today is going to be actinomyces, which is the second of our gram-positive branching filaments. If you're going through this in sequence, you'll be happy to know this is the final gram-positive organism of our series, so congratulations. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link below or on the I button on the upper right hand corner. If you consider chipping in a dollar a month, whatever you can, anything uh, really helps keep these videos free and coming and offsets the cost. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or patronize my advertisers by clicking on the ad. All of that is very much appreciated. Thank you in advance. Just your general reminder here, make sure and know this, the gram-positive cell wall versus gram-negative cell wall. I've seen this come up on exams over and over again on QBank, uh, so you'll want to be familiar with this. It's all very testable. You should also know then how the gram stain works, which is uh, certainly the ubiquitous stain in microbiology as far as bacteriology goes. This is very important here. So you need to know what your anaerobes are and we've already talked about two of them or at least this is our second and it's the ABC's of anaerobes ABC now certainly these aren't all of the anaerobes but they're the three anaerobes that come up most in clinical practice and on your exam and that's actinomyces the topic of this talk which is a gram positive branching filament B for bacteroides that's a gram negative rod and uh, we will talk about that when we get to it, when we get to the gram negatives, and then of course C for clostridium, which is a genus, and that's gram-positive spore-forming rods. Okay, so actinomyces, bacteroides, and clostridium are all obligate anaerobes. So as we go through, we're going to look at our algorithm, we'll talk about the major disease that actinomyces causes, and then we'll finish up with a story. The major species of actinomyces, the one I want you to keep in mind, is actinomyces israelii. Here's our algorithm with the gram-positive branching filaments blown up. And I want you to pay special attention to the differentiating factors between Nicardia and actinomyces because this is likely how they're going to ask you on the test. They'll give you a patient with a certain disease process uh, and you'll know it's Nicardia, you know it's actinomyces because they cause very different diseases. And what you will be asked then is, is this aerobic or anaerobic? Is this catalase positive or catalase negative, etc.? And they may give you A, B, C, D, and E, and the right answer will be catalase negative if it's actinomyces, and then all the wrong answers will be properties of nocardia. So you want to know the properties of nocardia versus the properties of actinomyces. Remember, they're both branching filaments, gram-positive branching filaments, so that's going to be important that you know as well. So our characteristics of actinomyces, in particular actinomyces israelii, is that they are gram-positive branching filaments. They are anaerobic. Unlike our nicardia, they are catalase negative and urease negative. Nicardia were positive for both of those. And actinomyces is not acid fast. Remember, nicardia was weakly acid fast. And then really important with actinomyces is that they form sulfur granules, which are not made of sulfur, contrary to their name. What they are are these hard yellow micro colonies, just florid with organisms. But the, I'll show you a picture of them. You can see them uh, when you're looking at an abscess or infection with actinomyces. This is what it looks like on a gram stain. So you can see the branching filamentous pattern. These are actually rods. They just form these tend to form these branching filament like, uh, I don't know if you can call them colonies, but uh, they, they have a tendency to form like this. So just remember the differences between Nicardia and Actinomyces. 
Um, also, it's worth uh, pointing out here that actinomyces can be found in the soil. It's really what helps plant and vegetable matter rot. But most importantly, it is found in the normal flora, particularly the oral flora, the reproductive flora, and the GI flora. Consequently, you can get oral infections, you can get pelvic inflammatory disease associated with intrauterine devices, and you can get GI infections, and usually that's associated with surgery, uh, although that's more likely going to be a mixed infection, in particular bacteroides. Treatment is a snap when you're dealing with gram-positive filamentous organisms. SN, sulfonamides for nicardia, AP, actinomyces use penicillin. That is very high yield to know. No toxins or virulence factors for actinomyces, uh, but uh, this is a picture here of a sulfur granule. This is a really small one. You can see it under the microscope, but some of them are actually quite large. Okay, the big disease caused by actinomyces is the lumpy jaw, or a cervicofacial abscess. So you have a patient that maybe is immune compromised, they're on steroids, they're on anti-transplant uh, anti rejection medications, chemotherapy, something like that. They, uh, maybe they've got really bad oral hygiene, they get some dental work done, and they develop this infection. And the infection is in the gingiva or... Uh, draining to the jaw, and they get this lumpy jaw. And if you ever see this come up on the exam, the number one thing you should think is actinomyces, the lumpy jaw, following dental trauma or in a patient with poor, poor oral hygiene. What you'll see coming out to the skin or coming into the uh, oral mucosa is a draining sinus tract. And often from that sinus tract, you can express these sulfur granules, and I'll show you a picture of that. Other locations where you can have actinomyces infections are in the pelvis, as mentioned. They're associated with intrauterine devices. You can get them in the thorax from aspiration. That's not common. You can get them in the abdomen from surgery or bowel trauma. And you can get CNS infections, similar to nicardia. The big difference, though, is that these will cause solitary lesions. But this is not common. If actinomyces is tested, it's going to be in the context of the lumpy jaw. The treatment, as mentioned, is penicillin, but because these can form some pretty substantial abscesses, you'll also need to do drainage as well, but the medication is penicillin. Here's an example of a sulfur granule you can see here uh, draining to the oral mucosa. You can see also that this patient has some pretty bad dentition. This is, uh, is surgery in the abdomen. Uh, you can see just florid sulfur granules. And this is a dead giveaway on the exam uh, that you're dealing with actinomyces. Here again, uh, you can see that this is an abscess and it's been drained and you can see the expression of a sulfur granule. So really, really, really important to, uh, to make the association between actinomyces and sulfur granules. Here again, the lumpy jaw. You can see a draining sinus tract probably right here. And again, a lumpy jaw. Our story takes place at an Army basic training camp. Not only any Army basic training camp, but the Israeli Army basic training camp. And it's in Israel because the major species of Actinomyces is Actinomyces israelii. And look who's coming. It is our boot camp cadets. And notice that they've got masks on. And why do they have masks? Not just for the COVID pandemic, but because masks are a recurring symbol for anaerobic bacteria. And notice in the background we have branching trees amidst this nice purple sky. And that will help you remember that these are gram-positive branching filaments. Purple being our recurring symbol in our scenes for gram-positive, and these trees for branching filaments. Now they don't have, unlike the trees at Oz, they don't have oranges, acidic oranges, and that's because actinomyces is not acid-fast, so it will not stain on Zeal Nielsen. 
Notice that the entrance to the training camp is a big sign saying no cats, no cats allowed. I guess some people might want to take their cats with them to basic training, but that's not allowed here. No cats for catalase negative. And for that matter, it's also urease negative. And catalase negative and urease negative contrast actinomyces to nocardia, which are catalase positive and urease positive. Notice also this nice welcoming draining stream uh, coming from the basic training camp and that's to remind you that actinomyces infections often cause draining sinus tracts. Oh no! This must be why they're training. Because there are meteors coming towards Earth causing an existential threat and these meteors are made out of sulfur and they're yellow and that helps you remember that actinomyces is characterized by yellow sulfur granules coming out of those purulent abscesses. Notice here we also have a woman soldier and the woman soldier will help you remember that pelvic inflammatory disease is another manifestation of actinomycosis usually in conjunction with the use of an IUD. And notice our drill sergeant here, he's really happy. He's got this big open mouth and his jaw is very prevalent. And that's to remind you that the major manifestation of actinomyces infection is cervical facial abscesses, the lumpy jaw, generally in people who are immunocompromised or who have really bad dental hygiene. And how is he guiding our cadets to where they're supposed to go? Well, he's got this big stick, and it's our purple penicillin pencil. And that will help you remember that the treatment for actinomyces infection is penicillin, or something similar, like ampicillin, as well as drainage of any abscess that is present. 